Uh, here. Okay, that one out. That's good. That happened. You should do a, the backwards one. Oh, I don't have that on the soundboard. And it'd take me like a, lo a long time to get that going. But that's a good idea. <laughs> Fucking thing sucks! We'll do it live. Welcome back to Cruising with Steak. Here we are. One more day closer to the Christmas season. James Cruz has a blue screen, but he's here. I'm here. He's here. Here with James Cruz. You're not Cruz. a nice person. We're here. We're here with, uh, <laughs> we got Cliff Wall, a.k.a. Felix. Hi. And we have uh, the man, Jerry Cthulhu. Hey, Jerry. Who was muted? Hey, dude. <laughs> Yeah, that was some perfect timing. We have we got some live listeners steak? pouring in. Jerry's got a hell bacon shirt on. <laughs> I do. And for people who are listening live, I'm dropping a link in the Gen Pop channel to a really awesome shirt on T Fury tonight. For like Ooh, two dollars. Special. It's two dollars? Oh, no, it's twelve dollars. It's the picture. When $12. was the last time anybody a, saw us beating, let's say, China. <laughs> China. China. China coupon? Well, I like that shirt. Sure. No, no, no. It's just 12 bucks today. It's for like three more hours. Yeah, that's a great that's a great shirt. Isn't it? A little baby Baphomet. Oh, man, time is... A little baby Baphomet. <laughs> time is running cup. out. Yeah. Time's running out. Uh, two hours left, so I'm sorry. I just so, yeah. That was very did, 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 did you... Box hero. I didn't buy it, which is interesting, but I have too many shirts. So here we are, guys. It's it's tis the season. You got see. <laughs> Did I get tell you guys about my mud wrestling history? Oh yeah, <laughs> we, we, we was, heard about that. Was there a mud flood at the time? <laughs> oh, great! great oh, mud. don't don't forget about your dream. Let's hear your dream, Felix. Oh, right off the bat, let me get my notes. This will all be in my report. <laughs> this, this was uh, last night. And uh, while I was in the dream, I really, it was pretty vivid. But then I woke up, forgot it. And as I was eating breakfast this morning, I, I, um, I started, things started like pouring back into my head. And so I had my journal next to me and I was actually kind of re researching a couple of little Christmas things for the show today. And I go, oh, I got to write these down just to mention them. And all you guys were in it. It's kind of like uh, Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz, where she's talking about her, all her family members. Like you're that you were there too, and you were also there too. Oh, so man. Jerry, Jerry, James, Cruz, and Grimstake were all in my dream. That's you guys. Like and uh, the basic premise of the dream was that we were. Did I smell nice? Uh, I don't know if there was no, there was no uh, olfactory uh, sensations in the in the dream. But here's the thing. Uh, we were all doing some sort of uh, road trip to NYC or New York, and we were all meeting up. And Jerry had us all kind of flo flown in, or we were we were brought in in like uh, limos. Just bank, bank we rolling all, everything. <laughs> and we were all blindfolded because he didn't want us to know where, like, where his uh, headquarters were. My lair. <laughs> I'm really rich. And I have like this. I have this little flash in my mind of a, just like a warehouse airplane hangar with like 50. Dude, black. I was just watching the flash. Oh, was there like 50 black? There was like 50 black stealth helicopters in a oh, warehouse man. that you kind of owned. This sounds more like a premonition. <laughs> and so we all met up and you guys were all kind of getting into, uh, into like drinking and stuff and since i don't drink it was kind of a, one of those things like all right guys i'll be the person who drives <laughs> the oh, designated thanks. i really driver. appreciate that but here's the thing like grim steak hopped in the car and there was like this real real vivid like scene of me in the back seat and i'm looking at the back of his head and it was almost like in the in the movies where they have like a movie screen outside of the car and they pretend like they're driving <laughs> 
God. It's like, just a, it was like a nighttime drive uh, down like a real curvy road, like sepia tones. And I kept going, Grimsick, I should drive. I just kept just trying to. This is an analogy for the podcast. Because yeah. <laughs> I'm just. I, <laughs> see, I, I know it's a dream because I would be driving if I was. <laughs> <laughs> So finally, finally, you you let me drive, and I felt safe. It was just like a real, just like foreboding thing. Like, oh man, I feel like we're gonna crash because Grimstakes. Yeah, I was all Grimstakes to uh, run in the podcast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's I mean, totally true. Driving that bus, <laughs> driving that bus. <laughs> right off the cliff. But that was like a car. But then somehow, somehow, some way, we ended up in like an RV going to New York. And what else? <laughs> And at the end of it, there was you. At least James and Grimstake were rocking on some like electric guitars, playing some amps, just doing instrumental riffing and noodling. Nice. And there, there was some random drummer, and it it might have it might have been kind of part of this dream. Now I think about it, is based off of something that Grimstake liked on Twitter. Really? You know what I'm talking about? A drummer. Oh, that that uh, that that little kid with the <laughs> the back yeah. that was drumming. Yeah. I I enjoyed that. They were like some were they from somewhere in Europe? Or oh something? yeah, it was some Eastern European country where they were just rocking out. But that and, it's a really and, little kid playing drums in the back was perfect. That's timing. not the one with the really skinny guy and that really big guy. No, no, that's like white trash craziness. The, I know they were what you're like talking a fam- about. family band, and they were like in a living room, and and the guy the the boy was probably like twelve, thirteen, playing like uh, Rammstein kind of riffs. Yeah. <laughs> And then the girl was probably like seven or eight, and she was playing on just one big Tom snare drum, and she had really good like rhythm. Yeah, she kept up perfect. It was, it was awesome. <laughs> but she was doing like a drummer boy kind of like two handed drum thing to like yeah. every, to uh, like, accent his uh, each of his guitar riffs. Uh, and then what happened at the end in the back to the dream? Um, you guys were rocking on guitars and I kind of just rolled up all kind of suave to get on the microphone and sing some improv, 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 uh, vocals. And the, what I was singing wasn't even going with what you guys were playing. And (laughs) I was kind of cringing thinking about it as I was singing. And, uh, the lyrics were just kind of just, uh, just pedestrian kind of things like what was going on in the scene like and you're over there and there's a tree swaying in the wind <laughs> and that's how it ended man <laughs> what a dream yeah, it was pretty wild man vivid dreams but something the, you the, find the, out the stealth uh, helicopter yeah like 50 stealth helicopters in the hangar seems like something Jerry like, would have it was like a little exposition scene, like setting the scene, like this is what's going on around Jerry and, and this is what's <laughs> just the James Bond villain. <laughs> that going on. Uh, very awesome. Oh man. Speaking of something crazy. I heard, uh, I saw Linda, Linda Moulton Howe talking some nonsense on Twitter today in this little video. And I actually want to play this clip because it's so mm, good. Sounds it. I like it. Sounds How good. does it differ from her normal stuff? She oh, talks it's, about. it's nah. great. Okay. Here it comes. Maybe. At a top robotics company in Japan this week, four robots being developed for military applications killed 29 humans in the lab. And they did it by shooting what he called metal bullets. <laughs> I didn't know there was any other kind. The scariest part is that lab workers deactivated two of the robots, took apart the third, but the fourth robot began restoring itself and somehow connected to an orbiting satellite to download information about how to rebuild itself even more strongly than before. And this this next sentence, is a, this is a quote. I'm, I'm writing this down. I've been doing this for years. This is serious shit, Linda. But you're never going to hear about this in. (laughs) That's the end of the clip. Oh my god! You know what? It could be true, dude. So that 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 if if that is true, the the robot downloaded information to be able to repair itself. Just these self healing robots. We're fine. I mean, Linda Moulton Howe is crazy. 
But I don't know. She does believe everything that comes her way. Let's think up a crazy story and send it to her from like. Oh, oh that would be it. great. Yeah, my friend Sven opened a portal to the <laughs> other universe. <laughs> And the demons are pouring in. <laughs> just go on a talking circuit with her. <laughs> That'd be great. No, we just write a letter. Uh, yeah, Sven. Sven's no good. <laughs> Fight some Russian astronaut. Yeah, just just clone his name. Um. Oh, on in yeah, other news, Yuri. Yuri, Yuri. In other news, uh, <laughs> D and D books are super cheap on Amazon right now. If anybody wants any Dungeons and Dragons books. Um, yeah, there, there's like crazy good sales on Amazon going. So there's a little bit of news. Uh, Love me some D and D. Yep. You mean scam, scam Amazon? Scam Amazon. Ooh, I like what you did there. I um, just came up with that earlier today. Patent pending. I like that. I, I didn't hear that anywhere else. That just came from my own brain. Mm-hmm. Boom goes the dynamite. Yeah, what he there's said. There's been a uh, there's been a recent Loch Ness monster sighting. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw this, but it, uh, it was it's apparently this author Ricky Phillips claims he took a photo of the Loch Ness monster, and it looks oh. more like a swan or a goose. Was this in the Loch? Yeah, it was in the lock. I think the original picture looked like a swan or a goose too. I mean, it was pretty. I dropped honest. the link in the yeah this in the Discord. Oh, yeah, that I looks just like some kind of armored dinosaur. Yeah, dude. dude yeah, that's that's the picture he took. So I don't know, man. He said he had a four foot neck with a head the size of a rugby ball. Uh, where's the rest of the picture? Yeah. I mean, it's a pretty weak picture. Uh, just, it's a dino that bot. Be, that's cool. It's got a horn yeah. <laughs> on its nose. Yeah, the thing does look Are crazy. Are you sharing that or what? I put, I put it in the Discord well, chat. It's oh. Here, I'll share screen for you, Felix. Kind of looks like a black and whitish picture with the neck protruding out of the water with a pretty big head but it looks like, like it, it it's its eyes are you know encased it was like a bony structure around them you know it's like yeah. raised up yeah or a helmet like a hel- yeah from it's weird. the golden compass <laughs> right and then i, I along, bet this oh, is a frame from some movie this like, is a pontoon boat harry house <laughs> <It's a pilot. laughs> it could be it could be the tail end of a boat sinking take away the, the neck it's just a pontoon boat yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that could be an engine because there's motion on the side which looks like an ear oh uh, you should run this What's picture that? through photo f- forensics chair <laughs> oh it's been it's been stepped on so many times <laughs> yeah. little, those little he- you see the headlines to the right yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know <laughs> it's in this is the daily record yeah <laughs> Even oh, that's not fake news. Yeah, the daily record. It doesn't get more legit than this. I, I'm not. I'm not really big into aliens or UFOs, but I know you guys are. So I wanted to throw this one out here. This what about uh, vampires. I'm not into those either. Right. I don't know a lot but about the, vampires. <laughs> but the, I, I guess the 50 year anniversary of uh, Apollo 8 going up to the <gasps> orbit around the moon is coming up. And have you guys ever heard of the Santa Code? No. Is that some twisted X-rated version of a Tim Allen movie? (laughs) (laughs) Jim Jim Lovell is one of the Jim Lovell's one of the astronauts in Apollo 8, and uh, he's quoted as saying, uh, "Houston, uh, Apollo 8, please be informed, there is a Santa Claus." And that supposedly was used once or twice by like uh, NASA astronauts. Oh yeah, but I have heard about that. Right. Yeah, they had a, they had a couple code names. It was Santa Claus. The Easter Bunny was another one. Oh, it okay. just meant that they're well. It means it that they safe. spotted it was a code. Hmm. And they didn't use it that much. Just like a couple times. Like five code times. For UFO. Code for UFO. Maybe. But who knows? It could have been anything. Could have been a code for Russians because Santa's in red, all red. You never right. know. Easter bunny is like yellow, springtime, Chinese. 
Yeah. I know you guys it's just it's love aliens. Not in a racist so. way, I'm just saying. That's I, I was doing a the, little. The uh, photo forensic are inconclusive on that picture. Inconclusive. Uh, it's real. It doesn't look right. photoshopped. <laughs> it doesn't look typically photoshopped, or they did a really good job. Ooh. And there's some weird circular artifacts in here. It's probably a bit messy. It's the waves. Or the I don't know. I don't know what it is. People can look at it themselves. It's a shitty zoomed in picture, so Yeah. It's uh twelve hundred by six hundred pixels. JPEG, they should just so they just need to uh totally surround JPEG. They need to surround Loch Ness with a bunch of Instagram models, and then when they're taking selfies around the water, one of them is bound to get it in the background. It's, it's Let me just happen. say this. This picture is point, uh, 0.7 megapixels. <laughs> that's the resolution it's at. Wow. What is I that, think, a flip phone? Yeah, that <laughs> yeah. is. That's seriously. Is, Pretty much. Uh, my Nokia fucking Razor. Motorola It'd be Razor. funny if he really had a flip phone. A I took it with my flip phone, speed. mate space I, I was doing a, when i was looking up stuff earlier i was trying to find maybe anything like you know ufology slash christmas related events and I, the only thing i came across not events but like stories in the past but one that it just came out on the 16th was two days ago uh keep an eye on the sky you may spot the christmas comet Ooh. as it close to the it approaches Earth. Yeah, I see that uh, right now. If you see a greenish blob glowing in the night sky, it's not a UFO. It's a comet known as 46P slash Wirtanen. Yeah, Wirtanen. Wirtanen. Yeah, Wirtanen. It'll, uh, it'll be 7 million miles from Earth. It's, yeah, the brightest comet of the year. Uh, cro- closest approach would be Sunday. Mm hmm. Uh, I'm well, I thought Cruising Mistake was the brightest comet of the year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah, Closest ah, it's been ah. in, since 1950, uh, says JPL. Uh, and, however, those expecting a spectacular show like the one put on by uh, Haley's Comet will be disappointed. Uh, it's this is you know basically it's 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 called the Christmas comet just because of the time of year it comes by. You got a sad trombone. Mm, yeah, I do. Bum, yeah. Bum, bum, bum. yeah, that's not the meteor that NASA's warning everyone about, right? No, no, I isn't that one supposed it. to hit tonight? Yeah. Oh, cool. You survive to live another day. Yeah. That's really the uh, that's the biggest sm- smack in the face we'll ever get. It's a giant meteor hitting. <laughs> like that's just that's. You'd never know just this. Not, you'd be, yeah, you'd be vaporized. Game over. Yeah, you wouldn't notice. Okay. It'd be like we're talking and then boom, blackness. Yeah. Wait a minute. What the fuck? Hey, at least we got past episode sixty-nine. Yes, that is true. Hit the milestone. Is this 75? I think so. Isn't yeah, there a name for that? Like, um, Sassente Cinco? Sassente Cinco? Cinco. I like that. St- sticking with, uh, space, there's, uh, uh, I saw it just posted in the, in our, in, the, in the Gen Pop chat in, uh, Cruising with State Discord. Uh, come join the meat locker. <laughs> the meat locker. <laughs> what up? Uh, yeah, Trump plans to uh, create the unified uh, U.S. Space Command, right? Yeah, that was months ago. Well, oh no, that's uh, yeah. I saw that thing came out today. President Donald Trump worries. plans to sign an executive over order before the end of the year, creating the U.S. Space Command as a uh, major military command, <clears throat> uh, according oh, to two like U.S. Branch. Pence. Uh, yeah. Pencil. It won't be under the Navy anymore. Space Force. Yeah, it would be on its private time. <laughs> uh, let's see. Pence will make the announcement Tuesday at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. One official says he could sign an order as soon as Tuesday. Uh, the move is separate from Trump's goal of creating a, a Space Force as an independent armed service branch 
but it could be a step in that direction. Uh, the U.S.'s Air Force's existing space command would be a key component of the new joint entity, raising space, uh, yeah, r- raising space in the same status as the uh, U.S. Cyber Command. So they'll be they'll be uh, controlling space. You know, that, pretty soon they're going to fill out all five parts of the pentagram <laughs> in the Pentagon, and then it will fully power up. Maybe, <laughs> yeah. It's, it won't actually like a military be service that just likes to just have fun. It'll just be just, yeah, they do just goofy, just, just do goofy pranks. Cyber command, just the party core. Um, yeah, they just do goofy pranks around the world. <laughs> they call, they call the great. goofy call yeah. the CPI, the Central Party Bureau. <laughs> but it's and, uh, it's going to be low Earth orbit. Like they're not actually going to be in space. No, space is fake. It's, it's maybe. Just claw, they're just claws that'll just grab uh, Chinese satellites like claw arms satellites are fake dude yeah I know <laughs> yeah I know hypothetical, <laughs> hypothetical. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that shit with a straight face anymore. Oh, you, so didn't you have a a, a, a a history event in space history event what are you talking about right now? People didn't go to space forever ago. There's all these basketball yeah. players questioning it now and getting shamed. <laughs> That's because yeah. they're on the flat earth path. Yeah. They're still, they're still uh, there. Was, they're still back was, there at that mile marker. And, and, and love it. Oh. Level, level one YouTube. Look at a flat earth. <laughs> <laughs> Elementary. Level four. My, maybe I said level two. Let's get level two. Because my brother got there. Is that Man. past NPC uh, status? Or is that still in the no, NPC? I, th- I think it's an NPC net of sorts. <laughs> it's a net. It's a broad range. No, no, it's just oh. the, the holes are only so big, and the NPCs can't get through. <laughs> well, you get lost, yeah. and they're like, "Oh my god!" Did you guys see ads for the Oculus Go? No, what is this? It's more kind of portable Oculus Rift. It's more like a. Um, more like a media thing where you can kind of mm-hmm. you know you'll have like your home screen and and you can like pick your apps like netflix and maybe have conversations with people and um there's no cords to it you you like um i think you tie it to your phone or you do the initial tie to your phone and it comes with a little c- controller it's real sleek Weird. looking yeah it's pretty this sleek is so, looking this is something you strap on your face and have leds flash Oh yeah, it's it's, it's mind control to the max. Totally. It, they, they I say want it. it's, they I say want it's it too. The, uh, the one where you put your phone in it and, and the Oculus Rift. It's just like it's the worst. Was it the HTC Vive type thing? Yeah, I don't want yeah. something that I have to stick my phone in. That's dumb. I don't ever want to strap something to my head that's going to yeah. beam. I mean, imagine if the network got hacked and they could actually <laughs> change the rate on everyone. They could totally mind control it mm-hmm. or at least knock you out. It's just like with the how's that? Ah. Yeah. It, it, it's just like with the the Bluetooth headphones I have. I, I use them sparingly because when I turn them on, I can feel a yeah. little just like tinge in my brain. <laughs> well, I don't even think and about that. I use fun. Bluetooth headphones all day. Do your guys, do you guys feel it? I don't feel no, it. I don't feel it. Do you just guys just get really ringing just... in your ears when you go past big cell towers? Like really no. loud. Like, as I get a, I get a lot I I get frequent ringing in my ears, but it's probably just tinnitus that I always chalk it up to. <laughs> just just try to get real. But, get but who knows? Center your chi. See if you can feel the Bluetooth. <laughs> you can. You totally. I can. feel it. You can feel your yeah. Wi-Fi router too. Oh. Then again, they say that like the the headphones, your headphones with the cord is basically like an antenna to your brain too. And you know, we just. For what it's worth, I I have a smart meter in my house, and it doesn't bother me at all. But it could be, hmm. maybe. But I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't feel it's intrusive. Did you ever hear this one that like you can um, when you're going out to your car and you use your remote to unlock? That if you're really far range, that if you put your uh, remote under your chin. And hit the button that that your brain or your head becomes like a uh, amplifier. Whoa! Amplifies really? The... Does it work? Yeah. I mean, I've never done. I've never done that's, it. That's all your right. I start lighting up. 
honk, honk, honk. That's really low. There's no radiation in there. Well, it's like a remote me. control, you know, to your TV, infrared. My brother got this real cool, or my brother-in-law got this really cool uh, Christmas gift uh, for his son. And it's basically a little cylinder and it lights up and it has like green and little flashing lights. And on both ends, it has like a little metal cap and you have to like complete the circuit to make it light up. And you can, you can like hold hands with people and and one person holds one end and then the other person holds the other end and it'll light up the, it'll only light up when you complete the circuit with uh, your fellow man. Hmm. There it is. Pretty nifty, huh? This is pretty nifty. That goes off when you complete it. All right, James, what'd you get your kids for Christmas? Come on. What'd I get them? Uh, a bunch of sh- too much, dude. <laughs> I got a little anecdote about uh, things uh, to do. gifts, gifts for Christmas. Uh, um, well, my my oldest son. You know, once they get older, the, the presents get fewer. But like we got a P, a PlayStation um, VR you the VR thing PS4 VR uh, oh man yeah. should have bought him some toilet paper in bulk yeah <laughs> <laughs> I should have just in a bidet <laughs> yeah I always thought it'd be dope to install a urinal down here in the basement <laughs> the house full of boys except my wife you know. Um, it's a good idea. Oh man, it would be freaking perfect. <laughs> With like little LED lights, like fl- like it could around. be like Darren and Graham in the old igloo, man. Just just strap a freaking uh, urinal to the back of the garage and piss mm-hmm. right out of that. <laughs> just right out the side of the garage. <laughs> <laughs> this is a funny story. I was in the Walmart bathroom a month ago and. Uh, there was just like this guy that was in there and he was like helping his little two or three year old go pee uh, on a urinal, I think. And it was just kind of quiet in there. And then uh, he felt like he needed to like, let me know what was going on. He's like, Oh man, it's really, I'm really, we're really having a hard time getting him to go pee. And it was just like a, our awkward bathroom <laughs> conversation. He's like, Oh, we're, we're trying Cheerios. <laughs> we're putting Cheerios. In <laughs> we're trying. So you can, can aim, the Cheerio. Yeah. aim at the Cheerios. Uh huh. And I was like, "Hey, good luck." When I left, but I, I you know, I, I kind of chatted with him because I got my my baby boy who's not potty trained yet. So it was uh, shit. I told him like, "Yeah, my mother in law is really good at doing that." So we're hoping she'll uh, she'll do the trick or do her work. Yeah. Her how's how's he doing? How's he doing, Felix? I know you said he was puking the other day. Yeah, last night he got he, something came on quick, like right before dinner, and you could tell he was getting lethargic. Oh man! <laughs> and um, he's getting lethargic, and then he started saying "dead at medicine." Mm, dead at medicine. He's like smart, like for like not even two yet. Yeah, dead medicine, and he wouldn't eat. So then we gave him Tylenol. And the moment we gave him Tylenol, he's like laying on his back. He just like up chucked. Oh jeez! <laughs> yeah. And then after that, my wife like ran off to like just go get some stuff, like run some errands. And I just kind of was taking care of him and he kind of like seemed like he was doing better. Then I gave him his bottle at the end of the night and I just didn't think that he was going to puke again. So oh, starts man. Puking Round all, two. All, all over the couch and I pick him up and <laughs> yeah. get him into the kitchen and just like I took my shirt off, took his shirt off, and then he barfed on my front and then in my back <laughs> crying just puking <laughs> everywhere <laughs> and I yeah. wait till they so, puke in your car fucking get ready for that one I just felt helpless cause, cause she was gone and then she came back and yeah. then she had like a pile of stuff that I was like collecting just puke <laughs> everywhere a pile of puke <laughs> yeah and I'm like yeah. wiping him down and wiping the couch down while I'm holding him and yeah but he's feeling better better today but you feel feel for the the dude yeah, yeah. some good vibes yeah, yeah my youngest one he's got some like bronchial thing going on coughing up half a sh- whatever God, kids just just well, they send these kids to school like, especially like in my my kids class he does like half day kindergarten like dude it's a half day don't send your fucking kid to school yeah 
uh, like in kindergarten, you know, it's like, and then sure enough, now he's got it. Now it'll be one by one. You know, I think Grady was already complaining. He's just probably saying that so he can get out of school. But, uh, and they only got till Friday. Yeah. He'll just like mush some refried beans in his cheek and (laughs) moment to drool it out. Yeah. (laughs) Dude, I've, you got to get him some, uh, uh, try some uh, oregano oil and warm water and uh, coconut oil. Hmm. Fix them right up. Gargle it and drink it. But it's got to be the uh, oregano oil that's, that's, uh, Oil of oregano, not like the. Oh, oils. yeah, I know what you're saying. Sounds like witchcraft. Not that oil of ole. That extra yes. virgin olive oil. No. <laughs> I don't know. Oil of oregano. Yeah. Baby I, oil. Was, I was drinking the stuff that you was supposed to be just for like external use and essential oils, and I realized that I'm like, oh, I shouldn't be drinking this. <laughs> and uh, I went and got some real, real deal. Yeah. Well, didn't they come out and try saying that essential oils are like, like don't don't use that shit like it's no good for you isn't that what i've heard what clogs you up or something i don't know who knows i'll hit up the googles find this out there's just a million little quarter facts that i know in my brain and then i can never access any of them you gotta you gotta upgrade to the i know i need new firmware or something brain and just let's check this out you got upgraded to that premium brain, my man. <laughs> uh, you guys ever going to do a paywall or what? No, absolutely not. <laughs> I would never expect anybody to pay for this. That's insane. Let's do it for no. the love of the game. Just turn on a mic. Be some sort of, it'd be like the meat Hang locker. Out with my guys. Like, yeah. The meat locker would be the... The meat oh. locker is the extra content? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we don't okay. charge for that. We don't charge for anything. Come on, we, we just, just we just read Shakespeare plays in the I mean, we could, right? We it want, could be like because we have zero obligations to anybody except ourselves. <laughs> we're like we're right. like a room full of monkeys on typewriters over the span of a million years, but yeah, crammed in two hours. This yeah, sooner that's, or later, Shakespeare uh, saw it's going to come it. out. You have to upgrade uh, your lib- libsin. We already got the. <laughs> well, I know, we got some I libsin. Think, yeah. Got plenty of room on there, I think. Guys, oh, you gotta yeah, switch dude. to Simplecast. It's the best. I was thinking about it. Simple. I was looking 14, at it. Or what, Thirteen bucks a month, and and you have unlimited. Yeah, yeah. which unlimited. is just a, I can't process with my brain why that's a, a thing. But who because knows? Because that's the way it should be. The yeah. podcast companies like Grim, Grim, Gribson, Libsyn, Gribson. and yeah. Spreaker, Stitcher's the worst. But Stitcher's yeah, Stitcher's free. Then Spreaker's the worst. One of them's worse. Yeah, Spreaker charges yeah. you. You it's couldn't so. even upload more than 15 yeah. megabytes per week, something like that. Wow. They're all they're all a bunch of scammers. Yeah, they don't have to switch RSS feeds. Uh, or Sim- Simplecast also works into WordPress. So if you have a, a website, it'll totally integrate. Hmm. Does it sound like too much work, Grimstake? Yeah. yeah <laughs> did, did, did you did you hear that in my voice? Then I gotta switch to RSS feed it's, over. It's a lot of setup. Yeah. Take a day off. But yeah, it's only I, know, I would. Thing. It's true. I mean, if we did, we'd have to yeah. get all our masses of thousands of subscribers <laughs> merged over. It too. can happen. <laughs> Think of it as honing your skills. Yeah. Did yeah. you didn't you do a screenshot of what is the podcast on the left? They have like Patreon, they get like forty oh, yeah. thousand. Yeah, last podcast on the left, they get they get, they get almost fifty thousand a month on Patreon. The oh, same with com- like same with Cometown. Cometown gets like f- like forty five thousand a month on Patreon. People just love to throw a dollar away. Here Apparently, there. throw it this mm-hmm. way. Yeah, but Patreon's a bunch of Nazis. Yeah. That's yeah. Well, there's did. a lot of people that are leaving now because they uh, ever since they banned Sargon. Yeah, well, which is that ridiculous. was totally unfair, then. What's this yeah. new Stripe thing? What is that? What, what's oh, that's Stripe? a grammar. We should that's... start our own yeah. new, like, Patreon thing. Right. I like it. <laughs> Let's do it. We could I got write, a really good I, idea. I could write it. Yeah, we got a guy here a, that writes this stuff. <laughs> I, got a, I got a good idea. Let's hear it. What is it? We, uh, it's um, just like laminated pieces of paper. Uh, stick to your butt. 
No, no, no. And they have little like 2D obstacle courses on them. And you go through the obstacle courses with your fingers. <laughs> okay. like a, uh, we'll slap like a, a Cruiser with Steak logo on them and get them out. <laughs> Let's do <yeah>. it. <laughs> and you like jump over like logs and just give your fingers. Yeah. It's kind of like the Collect tech, all tech five. Deck I was just going to say, could you, could you take your tech deck down it? That'd be awesome. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Just man. like little, little puddles. And we really got to get with that guy so he can start developing all this stuff and 3D yeah. printing it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, obstacle yeah. course, like a little he printed with like contours on it it'd be He's, awesome he said in order to make action figures of us he needs uh, like molds of our heads james <laughs> so i don't that's know if that's possible and all of your all of your anatomy even your nether yes. And your no, <laughs> that's fine you guys exactly. could do the febreze a uh, statue of you little figure action figures <laughs> yeah, <laughs> those would be our bobbleheads <laughs> be great yeah uh, with there, the, the, there's the a lot febreze of Febreze accessory things we could <laughs> And then, and then and James comes with, with like a, a, a motorcycle helmet. <laughs> Would have what, to. Uh, what do we think? And then Jerry, Jerry's comes with like 10 cool t-shirts. At least 10. I think it was like dice or something. Like they were glowing in the dark when he was showing me something like these. There's these fluorescent pills that you put in the dice the dye or whatever would you glow if makes, you ate those pills? makes it glow yeah they're like little mini glow sticks but they're like 20 bucks for like a ton, i don't it's not a lot yeah it's really expensive a pill per pill it's like 20 bucks yeah but that stuff goes in as like is is a is a plastic mold no dude these are like little inserts like it's weird wait what does it go in to make Into it to a dye like like my like my D D die right here Oh, okay. it goes into a dice, like a die. How do you get it in there? You have to like drill a hole. Yeah, it's like in there somehow. <laughs> well, it might huh. maybe you put it in like halfway, or you might build it around it somehow. Right? Yeah, maybe you like. I don't know how that you know, works. Engrave, but maybe as you're building it, you insert it and then it builds it around that or something. I don't know. So then, what your dice gr- glows? Forever? It glows in. The, that's how you do glow in the dark shit. Yeah, I guess. <clears throat> So you can just do D and D at nighttime. You buy these like you can go on Amazon right now. You can look up three D printing, or um, uh, yeah, three D printing glow in the dark uh, pills. I think it's what it's called. <clears throat> and you can buy like a did dish. your um, did your keyboard crap out from dumping water on it? Oh, it's all funky. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I tried. You know, I was like, it was dry, and I plugged it back in, but dude, it was so like. Sticky. It was all. It's all sticky, and uh, <clears throat> it just it did not work good. So I just I'm keeping my old one for right now. My old Mac, my Macaulay, Macaulay, which is like this off. These were these like these products that you used to get back when I bought my old Mac Tower. Like some of these old school products. <laughs> yeah, it's a a Macaulay, Mac Alley. Yeah. You know, used to sell this stuff was um, uh, not it wasn't Circuit City. There was another, there was another oh, place um, like that. There was Circuit City. I don't think Best Buy was around back then. This would have been in like the late nineties. Not Radio Shack. No, there was. I swear there was another Circuit. Is it Circuit Village? <laughs> no, uh, I'll never oh, remember Cir- Circuit Township. <clears throat> Boulevard, Circuit Boulevard, <laughs> Circuit uh, Microcosm. <laughs> yeah. Um. Ah, oh, you know another. Uh, I'm I'm just having brain fart with that. But anyway, yeah, how, about a, how about a little uh, uh, Christmas tradition? Tradition oh, from around the world, a Christmas tradition from. Oh, around one the more world. space fact oh. that you posted, Felix, fifty years ago, on. Uh, in 1968, but I, I talked about that. Already. You did, yeah. I mean, I didn't talk about what the article. Uh, the, just the one part about the Santa code. Oh, okay. There's other stuff. Did you? There, was there anything else from no, that? I didn't. I didn't glance that far down. But anyway, cool. Uh, that there you go. 50 years ago, but on December 21st was they they orbited. Yeah. There's some other stuff where they read like uh, 
Genesis and just talking about how God created uh, the world and this and that. And it was funny too. My son was just telling me, uh, he's like, Dad, I need I'm filling out this thing for school. It was like Christianity. And he was what? asking me about all the, the this Bible stuff. And at the same time, I was looking up um you uh Christmas. I had I think my search tags were like Christmas end times and like something and then he comes down and starts asking me about some christianity and, uh, and some he's like when when did uh you know what books were written you know like the testament and on this and that you know and who wrote him and the apostle this is for you know, school yeah yeah this isn't even like a catholic school or anything this was just they're they're learning different like just history of uh, yeah crusades. just basic stuff yeah <clears throat> So I gave, try to help him out with that real quick, but it was kind of funny. I'm like, right at the time I'm looking at shit, like some end time biblical shit. And then he comes down asking me about the Bible. <laughs> Weird. Yeah. Synchro. Huh, or I might do some coincidence. Maybe. I might do some research uh, in the next few weeks on, on the Dead Sea Scrolls and, and talk a little bit about it. We should do like that. that. That'd be cool. Because those are just like. I never the, really looked fully into that. Yeah. <laughs> those are the books that didn't make it to the you know final copy of the the bible or whatever but there's all these right and allegedly texts well what is there 27 so, books i think like the nag the nagasaki nagamati mm-hmm. diaries that whole all that stuff the gnostic uh, bible parts that was all there nagamati nagamati i think it's called mm-hmm yeah, I think you're right. I think it's but yeah. the, the one standout that I, I just there's a title to one of the books there, and it's it's written from the perspective of a woman, and it's called uh, the title of it's uh, Thunder Perfect Mind. Ooh, and was I it just by like, Mary Magdalene. <clears throat> I don't think it is but Thunder Crotch, <laughs> but I, I like the, the just the name of it. Just like those three words together, just Thunder Perfect Mind, just has a nice like ring to it. It's really got a you live an epic journey. But uh, but but the big thing about it is the 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 woman who's uh, saying little lines in it. She like contradicts herself on purpose, like left and right. Like I'm oh. I'm pure, but I am the, yeah. the whore. I am this and the yada yada yada. But she uh, Talan in chat is saying Nag Hammadi and Dead Sea Scrolls were found in two different places. But aren't they part of the same collection? I don't know. They have something to do with each other and know it. They got a little something. They're, they're um, two different on, beefing on. crews. Talk, talk. <laughs> Show us come those claws in person. Uh, He'll have some listener on the line. Live listener on the line. That's why we need a call in. Yeah, but, we need uh, call before in. I talk about it, before I talk about it, I like to like read into it a little bit more. But I, I like the All the right. religious text that didn't end up in the Bible. That's just a cool, cool thing. Like the Book of Enoch. Here. Yeah, why? Why'd they leave all that stuff out? Because it's got magic in it, aliens, magic and alien. Yeah, that's true. And demons, whatever, whatever you want to think they are. Because everything is. Did you guys ever hear of the what is it? The Urantia or Urantia? Urantia, Urantia, Urantia. Yeah. Religious uh, mythology. It's like a seventies hippie cult gone wild. Oh man, I never looked into it, but I worked at a call center, and some girl had it, and she was. The MIT so he's, he's, he says it was early Gnostics versus a deviant Jewish. Nope, he just deleted that. He's probably <laughs> censoring himself. Yeah, I think censoring. he just censored himself. No, don't read that. Yeah. It comes yeah. back with uppity instead of devious. Yeah, got exactly. <laughs> what I say is what I say. Oh, I, I love like, it. Uh, there was one time in the in the chat or in the chat where I uh, I wrote, uh, "What's uh, what's up, all you nuggets." And I did like the scroll or the the fast swipe text, and nuggets came up as the n word. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, oh. I, I like Whoa. I spell. I, I did like a little proofread of it beforehand. So I'm just crash me. Hey, why would that come up? I never, I never. Text yeah, exactly. That. Why is that your predictive text, Felix? <laughs> do, do you have some I've, secret I've plans? Never, it's from the collective conscious of everybody. I, Maybe you no, know, it's yeah, funny. I, yeah. I opt out. I opt out of um, you know, like study my words. Yeah, me too. <laughs> what, I don't, I don't want to, my, my, to personalize it or whatever. Yeah, so, learn right. my language. <clears throat> mm. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, Sargon got kicked off a of Patreon because of a 
Yeah, he dropped the N-word. Yeah, I saw saw that. But he wasn't... Okay, so the recording of him doing that was posted on someone else's channel upon which he was a guest. It was a show he was on, someone else's show. Mm -hmm. It wasn't posted on Patreon. It wasn't promoted on his channel. So someone found this on another channel and used that to cancel his account there. That's why it's so bad. Wow. So it wasn't even Patreon content. I mean, they went beyond their own terms of service to personal. It's personal Mm -hmm. at that point. I mean, there could probably be something in the small print that says like in. No, there isn't. They just put out a big thing about how they're restructuring their whole terms and service around the destruction of hate speech. And then boom, Sargon gets kicked off for using quote unquote hate speech not even involving Patreon. So they don't even want people, you know, yeah, if you don't just, agree with them, you're going to kick off their platform. That's basically uh-huh. it's what the thought saying. police. I don't know. Free speech. There's no such thing as hate speech. There's only free speech. I know. There's no, I know, whatever. <laughs> but Welcome to the politically correct future. Yeah, it's insane. It's a crazy world. Kind of like, uh, well, and I'm a happy guy. You know, <laughs> uh, back to some Christmas stuff. Yeah, so, yeah. Mind, I, was, I got a couple little snippets. Okay, you guys ready? Okay. Yeah, go for yeah, it. Sure, snippet it up. Uh, just a little snippet here from around the world. All of our listeners out there in Norway, you probably know about this. I think we actually but do have some about. downloads in Norway. Nice. So it looks like women in Norway they hide their brooms on Christmas Eve. And the reason they hide their uh, brooms is because they want to keep them away from the wandering witches. Nice. And, yeah. And that's, and then in, uh, I don't know if it's in Italy, they have a witch named Befana. Um, she comes in and she actually like sweeps your floors for you. If you leave her wine and snacks and um, she comes in through the chimney, kind of like Santa Claus. And she does the same kind of thing. She leaves coal for, for the bad, the bad kids, and leaves treats for the for the good ones. Hmm. Bafana, B E F A N A. Bafana. She's a witch. Yeah, there's an, there's another kind of witch looking <laughs> creature in uh, Germany called the uh, the. F- Frau, yeah, the the fray, the F R A U, the Frau, Frau, yeah, the Frau, yeah, which uh, tales told in Germany and Austria sometimes featured this witch, uh, who hands out both rewards and punishments during the twelfth day, during the twelve days of Christmas, the twenty fifth through January sixth. She is best known for her gruesome punishment of the sinful. She will rip out your internal organs and replace them with garbage. Oh, God, the ugly that's the worst. Image. <laughs> yes, the ugly image of <laughs> Prachata may show up in, in uh, Christmas processions in Austria. And someone it looks kind of someone like the Krampus creature, which is a, another one that I can read too. But um, the story is thought to have... Uh, Descended from a legendary alpine goddess of nature, who tends to who tends the forest most of the year and deals with humans only during Christmas. In the modern celebrations, uh, the witch or close relation may show up in possessions during fast fastnachit in the alpine festival just before Lent. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty creepy. Yeah. <laughs> Rips it, a witch it, rip your guts out and put garbage. I got a little steam up for you. Yeah. You guys ready for this? Yeah. All right. We're going to talk about Caracas, uh, Venezuela. It looks like right around Christmas time, they they actually roller skate to mass and they do it in like big groups of people. And (laughs) I think I saw that. (laughs) They roller skate from from the 16th to, to Christmas Eve. And they'll even like close down the streets early in the morning so that, that the roller skaters can go. So like at like 8 a.m. until 8 a.m., the streets are clear for, for roller skaters. 
and another aspect to this is that that kids will kids in their beds before night before or like every night before christmas they'll tie a string to their their toe their big toe and they'll hang the string out their window and the people that are roller skating by will 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 tug on the strings to wake the kids up <laughs> huh. that's pretty cool huh yeah well Hmm. <laughs> yeah, what do you think about that? You should do that tonight. Put a string around your toe and hang it out the window. <laughs> hang your foot out the window. <laughs> and then James James will fruit fruit boot on by on his uh I'll skate on by. Yeah. <laughs> Is that okay to say fruit boot? Fruit boot. Fruit boot. Totally. I'll be smoking a fag. <laughs> smoking a fag. Fruit fruit booting. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, there's a bunch of these crazy ass ones. The Yule cat, you ever hear of the Yule cat? I mean, we've heard of Yule logs, but not a cat. No. One of the yeah, the Yule, Yule cats Island. leave little tiny Yule logs. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> on the countryside, on the snowy countryside at Christmas time, it's a giant cat. Uh, yeah, if, if, traditionally. Uh, Farmers would uh, use the Yule cat as an in- incentive for their workers. Those who worked hard enough would see- receive a new set of clothes, but those who didn't would would be uh, devoured by the gigantic cat-like beast. Today, the custom uh, it is customary for everyone in Iceland to get new clothes for Christmas to avoid their unsavory demise. <laughs> Man, what about the what about the uh, the Yule lads? The what <laughs> the, the yule lads i see this on uh it's that uh eight legendary monsters of christmas mm-hmm. so this looks like it's in iceland so i'm not gonna be able to pronounce this town but the yeah. the yule cool. yule, yule last vineyard or yule lads are 13 icelandic trolls who each have a name and distinct personality so it's like it's like snow white t- type of stuff in ancient times, they stole things and caused trouble around Christmas time, so they were used to scare children into behaving, like the Yule Cat. However, the 20th oh. century brought tales of the benevolent Norwegian figure Santa Claus, <laughs> I couldn't pronounce this name, who brought gifts to good children. The tradition became mingled until the formerly devilish Yule lads became kind enough to leave gifts in the shoes that children leave out, if they are good. <laughs> Whoa! So, so they took a spin. They used to be used for, but then they had to compete with Santa, who's giving out gifts in their stockings. And, so yeah. it's like what they they reward good behavior rather than punish bad behavior. There's a shift in the culture. Yeah, what the heck? You know, mm. I like the anti Santas. Anti Santas are great, like especially Krampus yeah, like the Bell, whole Krampus Bell thing, Snickle yeah. and the Hans trap. Mm-hmm. Dude, this one's great. Colonel Santa from Japan. In 1974, the American fast food restaurant KFC really <laughs> released a uh, marketing campaign in Japan. <laughs> the seemingly simple slogan, uh, Kurisumasai na wa kanatai. Kentucky okay. for Christmas. Right. Kentucky for Christmas spawned a national tradition that still thrives to this day. Although Christmas is not even native, a, a national holiday in Japan, families from all over the country head to their local KFC for a special Christmas Eve meal. Whole, whole fried chicken, it may be. Expect to pay high premium for the biggest sales of the day uh, of the year for the KFC uh, dinner clocks in around uh 336 yen, which is 20 bucks or something. I think there's a backstory to that, that there was like some wandering tourists that didn't, uh, they didn't know what to get for Christmas dinner. And they were looking around for like a Christmas turkey and the the next (laughs) best thing, KFC in Japan. Perfect. I think nowadays you can get like a little package, like a little uh, Christmas KFC package deal where you get like the chicken and you get like a wine and some other kind of (laughs) that comes with it. I I like like that story too. I like the pickle and the Christmas and the Christmas tree. (laughs) 
<laughs> the germs is from the germans in, in the 16th century so it comes at no surprise that our <laughs> teutonic cousins still ha- have some funny customs relating to festival trees one of these is to hide a pickle somewhere in the branches of the tree <laughs> and give it and give a gift to whichever child in the household finds it some claim that the tradition may not be German after all. One legend says that the Christmas pickle orig- orange originated in Spain when two young boys <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, two young boys were held as prisoners inside a pickle barrel. St. Nicholas rescued the boys and brought them back to life. Either way, a pickle on the Christmas tree is a tradition we can totally get behind. That sounds like fake news. Yeah, you can totally get behind it it was this like factory back in my hometown that no one ever knew what they made there but everyone just says that they made pickles there Mm. (laughs) just a pickling factory there's no signs or anything no signs maybe it's like an mk ultra facility we also had like a slinky factory in our town i think too guess what they eat in south africa for christmas tradition midwest dreams no it might not have been slinkies it might have just been springs South African Christmas tradition meal. What do you think? Um, I don't know. I know nothing of South African culture. So <laughs> Fried <unless>. caterpillars. <laughs> God. I was totally going to yeah. guess something like that, too. Fried I don't want to come off as terrible. Yeah. <laughs> the creepy callies that uh, local <laughs> turn forward to. Fried caterpillars on Christmas may seem like one of the weirdest traditions around the world, but these caterpillars aren't just run-of-the-mill variety you find in the garden. The pine tree emperor moth, a crisp or a Christmas caterpillar, is covered in very uh, festive hues, giving all who sh- swallow a little extra luck for the upcoming year. Down the hatch. <laughs> yeah. Tasty. Mm. Tastes like poo. <laughs> mm. I got a little food one here, a little snippet. You guys ready for the <laughs> snippet? Christmas a little food snippet, food snippet <laughs> Christmas snippet. <laughs> No, a, I get it. Okay, go ahead. There's a dish called kiviak in Greenland, and it's got this really strange recipe. It's a delicacy. Uh, it requires five whole local birds called ox. And these birds, they're called ox. They look kind of like, um, almost kind of like, maybe like, no, not toucans, but uh, they're just birds. Okay. Uh, it's A-U-K-S. And what they do is they 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 stay they they get seal like seal skin seal skin so we got another what? animal and they they wrap they stitch these uh these birds into the seal skin and it's like beaks and all their beaks their feathers their their feet they wrap them in seal skin and then they bury them under rocks for like 3 months until christmas so that the birds ferment what? and then Dude. they eat them I don't know if they cook them or if they just like eat them because they go through all this fermentation process. Look at how cute that bird is. I just posted it in the chats. An auk? What does it look like? It looks like a... a It looks yummy. Yeah. I mean, it's probably delicious, but... It looks like a chocolate bar. It's chocolate. Yeah. Like an ice cream, like something you get out of good humor. Mm -hmm. But it looks like in 2013, there was a group of people at a party that uh, they, they did the wrong bird and they prepared it wrong and they died of botulism. Oh, and it was there was a sea. It was like a sea duck instead of one of these ox, and they just did the preparations wrong, and they, they ended up with botulism and died. I read about a bear hunter who uh, caught a bear and cooked some bear steaks, and didn't cook them enough. He cooked them like medium rare, bear and steaks. got some kind of nasty worm, like yeah. a bear worm. Oh. You know? oh. That's why you gotta, yeah, you gotta, you gotta cook that meat all the way. It was like it was like, it was like worm. It was like ninety feet long or some crazy oh, shit God. like that. I don't remember. I'll, I'll look it up. But what I've one? heard about that kind of stuff in swordfish too. Mm. What's that one, Stephen uh, King movie where the the alien comes out of the guy's butt? I don't know. Not Mystic River, but something else. Well, have you seen those parasites like bust out of uh, praying mantises and other animal like like insects? That, that's that's crazy shit. And like slow motion. Yeah. Well, they just rip they out. They're like never ending. I saw an article about 
praying mantises. It's something to do with the Christmas trees and these these like net there's like these praying mantis and that like they tend to have something to do with the pine tree or something like that. And you might get them in your house. <laughs> like, you like a nest of freaking praying mantises come out of it. <laughs> freaking crazy. Dude, no, here's good. one in uh Catalonia, Spain. The poop log. Yeah, I talked <laughs> about this last week. The poop log. <laughs> I this one if you don't week. poop well, we'll hit you with the stick. Poop log. <laughs> That's why you need a squatty potty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> poop log. I love it. <laughs> oh, man. I found that link on the bear meat. The dude was, it was in 2012 in Alaska. Oh. He got a rare form of trichinosis. Oh, man. R- related, <clears throat> related to that, uh, the, the poop log. In Spain, they have, um, or it might be in Catalonia, they have a, a separate thing to that um, called the Caganer. <laughs> just in the nativity set, they'll actually just have someone pooping, like squatting with like a little like um, soft serve chocolate ice cream beneath its butt. Of course. And they'll put it, they'll actually put it in the nativity and you can find all these different, like, you know, you can get celebrities or notable people, little like bobblehead looking things statues to put in your nativity set and there's there's some fertility aspect to it that like it keeps the christmas spirit alive or the nativity alive because the guy's actually there on the side pooping pooping out poop to fertilize the nativity Caganer. Caganer. is is he eating enough nitrogen rich food to make it worth it i think human shit is not really like mm. good for plants it's too acidic i'm sure but i don't know but i was thinking of sending you guys each like a, a little statue you can get like you know michael jackson or obama with the, <laughs> their trousers drop and a big turd <laughs> <laughs> definitely my first two choices for statues i'd want o- obama or MJ, yeah. MJ Jackson. Speaking of MJ, she's on our show tomorrow night. Oh, nice. Oh, Early show? Yeah, four o'clock. Yeah. Sweet. That'd Three at the sh- Saveway time. 3 p.m. Saveway time. That's where we work, Saveway, right? Oh, yeah. No, Save a Lot. But yeah, Saveway. Save no, I like yeah, Saveway way, way better. <laughs> I can't remember if it was Save a Lot or Try and Save, one of the two. I, I wish there was, was that the Simpsons Try and Save? <laughs> mm-hmm. <Yeah. sighs> got a bunch more Christmas. 3 p.m. Save a Lot. Uh, are we going are we going to talk about how uh, are we going to talk about how uh, okay, well Felix, do you have a song? We are at that uh, midway mark. Uh, I could do an Ocarina song. <laughs> Human newer. <laughs> Human newer. The handbook. Uh, it's the hippie way. Maybe they're doing that in your rancho. Maybe. Along with their law of one bullshit. Yeah, you guys ready for a halfway midpoint uh, little jam session? Yeah, sure. Jam it out. All right. Like I gotta, before, before I start, I got a movie movie recommendation for all you guys out there. Uh-oh. The movie's called Pottersville, and it was made in 2017, and it's a small town. And uh, there's a there's a Bigfoot twist to it, and it's just like one of those small town movies where you get to really know the kind of quirky characters. And I, I knew that you guys would like this, but there's a guy in there. He's like a rough and tough guy, and the actor is the same actor that plays Odin in um, American Gods. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. yeah. He's in it, and he's awesome. He's like a He's kind of, he, he reminds you of just like a knockoff Al Pacino kind of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but it's good. It's funny. There's a lot of funny, funniness to it. And Pottersville. Just Pottersville. Write it down. Okay. It's written it's down got, in my mind. I got a lot of funny little Bigfoot tropes. Like I'm not the biggest into biggest to big into Bigfoot. The biggest foot. But, but I like Bigfoot. Just the stories that I hear here and yeah, there. Yeah, that's, uh, that's what I like too. Like I'm not gonna go out squatching, but I love hearing some some nice stories. You'll you'll like it if you if you have uh, time and you want to get into the kind of Christmas uh, swing of things. 
you will like it. Check it out. Pottersville. Pottersville. Here's a little song. I got this music and it's on, on a, like a couple separate pages. So there'll be a couple parts where I got to stop to change the page. So be ready for that. Here we go. I'm ready. You'll know. It. You'll know it when you hear it. Let me start from the top. Excellent. That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Came through so good. Very nice. There's a couple tough cor- uh, little uh, notes in there that I forgot how to play. <laughs> <laughs> Jingle Bell Rock. Jingle Bell Rock on the Ocarina. Encore. You guys want to hear another? Yeah, you got another song? I got a little slow, sentimental one. This will get you guys into... It's just part of the song. I'm not going to play all of it. But this will make you guys feel kind of gushy inside. Oh, I can't wait. (laughs) Gushy. Mushy? Just gushy. All right, and I'll play this one better. It's a little easier. Here I go. Man, I'm all gushed up right now. Feeling, feeling <laughs> yeah, I'm gushy. feeling gushy. I like it. <sighs> That's nice. I'll be home for Christmas. For all you guys out there traveling, Christmas time, <laughs> be safe. Keep your eyes on the road. Don't get sleepy. Take a so, nap. that was beautiful music, Felix. We should discuss uh, about how basically... Christmas was has has hijacked, uh, you know, old pagan beliefs. Like, what was it, Saturnalia? Was that the Roman one? Saturnalia. <laughs> From uh, <laughs> sounds like uh, genitalia. <laughs> pretty much like you know they they were just it's like, hey, balls. Christ Christ is born on the twenty fifth. <laughs> they faked a whole birthday, came in because the twenty fifth was, I guess, already a holy day, or something. 
I don't know. This is how I research. I kind of read an article three hours ago in my short term memory. <laughs> totally just ices everything <laughs> out. It's more like winter solstice. Saturnalia. Yeah, exactly. It's the solstice stuff. And weren't just people real debaucherous and did all kinds of crazy stuff? I don't water. know. I don't know if they oh, were wow. debaucherous necessarily, but who knows? I wasn't there. Uh, oh, just to, just to sell that movie. Or wait, I don't know. The movie that I was talking about earlier, I don't want to ruin it, actually. There's something I wanted to say, but I'm going to hold back. Pottersville. Check it out. Is on Netflix? Death of the yeah. Sun. Something bizarre. <clears throat> well, what was it about? Well, it's just a small town. Small town, and um, there's a Bigfoot aspect to it. And that's all I want to say because there's a couple. Oh, of- you're not trying to remember the name. No, no, no. But there's just like an aspect to it that, that I was reminded of when he was mentioning these this uh, Saturnalia stuff. But uh, what was it called? Palmer County? Potter. Potter. <laughs> Potter's, <laughs> Pottersville. Pottersville. <laughs> that sounds familiar. And the guy, the the guy, the the rough and tough guy, who's like uh, kind of an outsider to the town itself, is the Odin from American Gods. The same. Yeah. Movie. I- I Ian McShane. Ian yes. McShane. Yeah. See, the OD says, uh, Death of the Sun, that's actually dead for three days and then rises again. Right. It's mm-hmm. that whole resurrection story. It's when the sun goes, it's the winter solstice. Mm-hmm. Now, does that have to do with the... Longer. The sun appears to stop because it, it goes forward to the Tropic of Cancer. Does that, does that have to do with the wobble of the Earth? Like it's on its starting to wobble a little bit and then it wobbles back? Wobbody, wobbody. But I mean, assuming were, that we're on a wobbly <clears throat> sphere. If you were at the Georgia Guidestones mm-hmm. <laughs> and you look at that west slit, right? At the, you know, it's, you can see the sun in that. I think at all the sun you'll see the sun in, in that hole. Or maybe it's just Man. the winter hole. What do you think? And there's one in uh, Ohio, too. I think it's uh, like, um, they're like top round towers or. I forget what they are exactly. That dude, right. Scott, what's his face from the History Channel, was looking into that for a bit. Oh, oh yeah. I don't remember his but name. But they had holes that would reflect the light on certain areas of the inside of the, whatever the structure was when the solstice sunlight hit it at noon or something like that. Yeah. You know, it's it's the whole um, Stonehenge one. Isn't there a certain... Solstice that happens there. Like, well, I don't um, think it happens there. I think it happens everywhere. No, I mean I don't know. There was always like st- some viewpoint, like looking through the one. Yeah, I mean that all these. Be, I don't know much about yeah. that Stonehenge. Thing. <clears throat> it's the ether. <laughs> it's, it's the ether, ether bro. <laughs> what, what, what you guys are missing about uh, Saturnalia is that it was said here that's characterized by role reversals and behavioral license. So people were like, yeah, it was a giant fuck fest. Yeah. So here slaves were treated to a banquet of the kind usually enjoyed by their men. Nice. <laughs> Children, Sweet. mostly slaves. Yes. And people, you know, were allowed to gamble and play with dice. And um, so it was just sin week. People. Yeah. Just get crazy week. That Sounds pretty it awesome. Because <laughs> it's also the it's symbolic it's spring break. Death too. It's like the, the party before death. It's also like um, yeah. Mardi Gras. Before Lent, you know, it's the mm-hmm. purge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Gotta get it's it all out purge. of your system. Get all that shit out of your system, right? Exactly. Well, and also, I Is mean, like, any, in, like in... oh, oh, you're bad. I was going to say, there any, any sacrifices or anything they they did at that time? Oh God, that's a good one to look up. I mean, I got a lot of symbolism and folklore stuff about Christmas and just Christmas. Uh. Genre, you know, angels, Christmas trees, stars, stuff like that. Well, let's um, hear it, James. Oh, right on. Uh, <laughs> well, <clears throat> we could go into unusual Christmas, Chris- unusual Christmas, Christmas tra- uh, traditions. Is that the link? No, this is uh oh, this is the uh, brownie locks. Brownie locks. Christmas okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is a site. This is just some shit I found, but it was, it's just a bunch of stuff that was 
pretty cool. Uh, you know, it's just a page to help understand origin stuff. But uh, so like angels, uh, the biblical references of angels frequently regar- regarding the birth of Jesus, the angel Gabriel informed Mary that she was about to bear a child. Angels are depicted in Renaissance art as divine messengers of God and are frequently seen all over the nativity surrounding Christ. So the association of Christmas with angels is not new. What is new is the angels images in the past. Angels were mostly portrayed based on the Greek goddesses of victory, Nike. (laughs) This is like a shoe commercial and and the halos above their heads were, uh, uh, more shaped like discs rather than rings, which uh, represented purity and holiness, spiritual power. Angels uh, were also featured with harps, and they were believed that their chief occupation, praising God with music and song. Today, angels appear to be more human-like with ring wings and ring-like halos. They look uh, mo- like the look of modern angel var- varies from thin to fat, blonde to brunette, white robe to golden or silver. In some cases, a definite distinction between male and female. Uh, but the idea is still the same as far as why they were around the uh, the most common adornment of the of Christmas tree is either a star or an angel. And it's to symbolize the divine guidance and protection that Mary and Joseph had during Christ's birth. And then it goes to the star on top of a, the Christmas tree. Early Babylonians, Egyptians, Chinese, Jews all had stars that were important to their religions. But the star on top of the tree for Christmas, for the po- uh, most part, represents the star of Bethlehem. In some cases, some say it feels to represent the North Star, like for sailors. But if you put it there to represent Star of Bethlehem, you might want to know that some scientists feel that this was uh, more of a supernova, while others feel it was a comet or meteor. Imagine a giant meteor blob on top of your tree. Others felt that in 6 BC, the planet of Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn were aligned and very close, uh, forming a very bright triangle known as Pisces that might have been the star of Bethlehem. If this is true, then the world also changed the date of Jesus' birth. But we won't go into that. Actually, didn't we talk to... um, um, Oh, who was it? Uh, T Bone Shuffle. T Bone about that man, uh, about the birth. Uh, yeah, it was actually like some totally different day. Oh yeah, it's not. It's yeah. definitely not or on September. the twenty fifth. Uh-huh. Uh, so the star on our trees to guide us through the season and through the year. Uh, bells and ringing of bells. I heard the bells on Christmas Day. Is in a line from a carol. Why ringing bells? The tradition goes way back to the Middle Ages. Is to gather large crowds. Uh, all right, I don't really care about bells. Christmas pig or boar? Uh, candy canes. You don't really care about bells. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't I'm really good. care about bells. I don't really care about the bells. <laughs> you gotta get that as a sound bite, Grim Stick. <laughs> no, I don't really care about bells. <laughs> candy canes? Yeah. In Europe, it was very popular to decorate your tree with edible items. So cookies and candies were most popular for children because they stayed in the freshest in open air without refrigerators back then because it was a long time ago uh, or preservatives because they they didn't have that kind of stuff. Uh, candy cane was said to represent the shepherd's crook at Oh, the, the croc. Yeah, like the shepherd's cane or whatever. Crocs? It, yeah, the croc. The yeah, shepherd's croc, crocs. Yeah. I think, uh, uh, yeah. I think it's crook. I think it's crook. <laughs> it's crook. Like a crook crooks and shepherds. Three little hooked uh, style. That the little hooked style made it easy to hang on the tree. The elbows represented Christian thankfulness for their daily bread, and the shepherds were the first to receive the news that Christ's child was born, and the canes represented that honor also. Christmas cards. Don't care about that. Who gets cards? Don't care about Christmas cards. No, don't. 
<laughs> Christmas carols. I don't care about that. Christmas seals. Hmm. What was that? Stamps? Stamps.com. Yeah. Our new sponsors. Stamps.com. <laughs> Christmas, <laughs> Christmas, Christmas trees. <clears throat> the Christmas tree came from Germany. <clears throat> its origin isn't in Germany, but actually goes back to Egypt. Egypt had a mid midwinter festivals festivals in honor of festivals? the god Horus. No, just okay. festivals. It, yeah, they held midwinter festivals in honor of Horus, son of Isis, goddess of motherhood and fertility. Uh, fertility. Okay. In fertile landy, uh, <laughs> their symbol of this uh, for this was a palm tree with, with twelve shoots, one for each month of the year. The Roman festival of Saturnalia decorated the trees with candies, very colorful, colorful I might add, and also brought the world bows into their house on January 1st. Uh, the German tree originally wasn't a real tree, but a wooden shaped pyramid structure covered with evergreen bows. <clears throat> Who does the upside down trees? You ever seen those with people? Think upside, upside oh, down. I've seen, yeah, I've seen probably just a hipster. No, I think there's some, <laughs> tradition. it might be like a German thing that they, they, oh. they hang the trees upside down in there. You're interesting. Uh, we should look that up. Maybe you could look that up while I read this. Okay. Uh, the when, 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 when a chat pyramid is a is assumed to have originated from the paradise tree a f- a fair tree decorate with apples used in medieval mystery plays um the tree symbolize symbolizes the story of adam and eve when adam left paradise he took a spring from the tree of knowledge uh and then from that spring sprig Later grew the tree that provided the wood for the cross on which Christ was crucified. Although Christmas trees are seen all over schools, shops, malls, homes, office buildings, libraries, blah, 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 public places. They do not play a big role in our Christmas in America as they do in Germany. In America, we place gifts under our trees. In Germany, the tree is the focal point decorated behind closed doors and Revealed on Christmas Eve. Hmm, interesting. No one is too poor or grouchy to not have a Christmas tree in Germany. And if seem if someone is unable to for some reason, sick, etc., someone will give them a tree. In America, and I love this tradition, is uh, a fir tree is placed at the highest point of a building under construction, no matter how high the building. The occupational symbol is a reminder of the work that goes into a new building and the people that make this a modern miracle. I would like to add my own personal note on this. Although I hate forests uh, being destroyed for high rises in my area, I love to. I have to say I love those cranes. <laughs> and I love how people, how the construction sites place Christmas trees and lighted stars, etc., on the top of those high, those high cranes and construction high rises during the holidays. How they keep them up from blowing. Okay, uh, yeah, they do that around here. They, I, I don't know if I've noticed that before. Like I put the trees up at the on the top of cranes. Just during that, <laughs> it seems to always hmm. be on top of the building somewhere. Uh, Father Christmas? Why not? Uh, <laughs> I got that little sidebar for the upper upside down trees. Oh, right on. Go for it. Um, legend has it that England's Saint Boniface was furious when he saw pagans revering an, o- an oak tree in 7th century Germany where he was teaching. He cut it down, but a fir tree sprang up on the same spot. Boniface used the triangular shape of this fir tree as a stool to describe the Holy Trinity of God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. Hmm. 
Uh, the pagans who had been converted to Christianity began to revere the fir tree as God's trinity tree. By the 12th century, it was being hung upside down from the ceilings at Christmas time in Central and Eastern Europe as a symbol of the Christianity and God, the Son, becoming a man because it resembled the shape of a Christ being crucified. Hmm. So it's oh, all the upside down thing. Yeah. Eastern Europe. Some people say here the benefits are that you like your kids don't uh, get at the ornaments. That's hmm. about it. And hipsters, uh, hipsters, and too. hipsters. <laughs> They're on the list. Christmas hipster elves. Christmas hipster elves. That's how they get under the tree easier. <laughs> it's like fire drones. Uh. Uh, mistletoe once again we have to go back to the romans and their traditions that begin with saturnalia as mentioned above decorating indoors with evergreens was believed to be the way to show hospitality to the spirits that haunted their woods in ancient britain the druids priests worshipped mistletoe that draws its water and minerals from the tree on which it grows which makes it somewhat parasitic For some odd reason, mistletoe was more likely to be found on trees struck by lightning, especially oak trees. The druid priests regarding mistletoe as a potion against poisons, the mistletoe off the oak tree was considered to be the best and more powerful. The things Hmm. it could do for you. And if you gathered it in the first lunar moon of each month, that it made an even that it made it even more awesome. Top that off with the fact that it was also felt cutting with a golden sickle and putting Ooh. it instantly in a pure white cloth, so it wouldn't touch the ground. Made it even more pure in its power. Ironically, the custom of hanging mistletoe in a doorway does not bring uh, origin. In, oh, does not originate with the Romans shock. It may seem to be originators of most everything else. In this case, mistletoe also enters into Norse mythology. Their God of lightning, uh, the God of light and vegetation bouldering dreamed he was going to die. It's a long story about this and, and that, to, but to, uh, to be brief, it, as a practical joke on Boulder's obsession, Loki gave a spring of it to blind god Hother, Hother, and told him to shoot at Boulder with his twig. <laughs> it's just a twig, right? Well, I guess he lucked out because Boulder was killed. So this proved that the Norse how were some powerful missile, I mean, you know, powerful mistletoe. Uh, so later on, Scandinavians had this custom that if enemies entered each other in the forest under mistletoe, that they would lay down their weapons and have a th- and have a truce for 24 hours. Today, if you met someone in a doorway with mistletoe hanging above it, you're expected to pledge peace and friendship. Today in America, kissing under the mistletoe is a well-known great excuse to smooch someone that you normally would not sloppy sloppy, sloppy kiss. Say, yeah uh and hang and many hang it not to not so like obviously that. so that innocent bystanders can get surprised sometimes the recipient is happy and sometimes he or she is not it's like uh christmas parties yeah uh, it's like uh, what's the baby? It's cold outside. You guys hear about that controversy? Oh, geez, yeah. Did we talk yeah, about yeah. that already? Uh, we kind of uh, mentioned it. Maybe think. I don't know. It's yeah, crazy. they banned in Cleveland here. <laughs> Did they really? Yeah, there was a radio station. Radio station. Uh, there was a radio station in Kentucky that played it twenty four seven to uh, <laughs> fight the ban or something. Dude, I just <laughs> think it's ridiculous. Who cares? Like, it's an old stupid song. All Christmas songs are. I don't know. Who cares? Uh, and it, it all seems consensual. <laughs> uh, uh, kind of reindeers? You want to know about reindeer? I mean, or I wanted yeah. to talk about ch- charity and uh, 
Peace to all. Yeah, Christmas phobias. That's my last one. I'll do Christmas phobias. <laughs> uh, many people dread Christmas for many reasons, stressful times, etc. Uh, so I try. I was trying to read some of these earlier. Uh, Aclophobia or orgo agoraphobia, fear of crowds. So fear of lines, traffic jams, social events, making I people. Thought agoraphobia was like uh, yeah. fear of leaving your home. Yeah. yeah. Uh, or many people suffer from just a fear of not pleasing others during the season and end up overwhelming themselves with too much responsibility. Hmm. Uh, Catagophobia, catagophobia, fear of ridicule and or embarrassment. This might include not giving the right gift, uh, being around family and their comments, a Christmas party pranks, etc. <laughs> uh, myth, it just mythobia. It sounds like it's just a bunch of people suffering from social anxieties and pressures that the holidays are just put so on. So true. <clears throat> and dude, it's you gotta categorize it. It's oh it's some goodness. kind of mind control. James, we got a live caller on the air. Yep, James is white. <laughs> Go ahead. Who is it? Oh my god! Son of a. What's going yeah, on? I mean it's it's. Uh, Christmas is awesome for the nostalgia factor, but nowadays I just feel it's just not that big of a deal. And yeah, I I, I, I I grinch out a little bit, and I hate to be like that. It just sort of I grinch happens. out. Yeah. <laughs> well, they had uh, the consumerism and just everything about it. It's just like, oh, that's ugh. the tough part. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like you're asking, like, what do you get for Christmas? And it's like, dude, I mean, yeah, a bunch of crap they don't need. It's, like it's, good, it's good for the economy, though, guys. Come on. <laughs> yeah. But we got to raise interest rates. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's what you do in a good economy. <laughs> uh, Aren't we about to do that? Yeah. I, yeah. Think, I think they're talking it's, it's about that. It's a horrible that. idea. <laughs> Who knows? Hey, how about... Uh, so, what was going on? There was a, a special uh, council for... Or a not a special thing? council, but yeah, there was a hearing for the Clinton Foundation. Like, wh- oh. what was going on with this? Jerry, do you know a scoop on this? Can you elaborate on this uh, at all? Christmas party? I don't know anything about it. I really didn't pay attention. But I do know that it was very underreported. And I think there were less than 50 people at the hearing. Yeah, wow. there was like nobody there. It was because I, I, was, uh, I was looking at some of the live view a little bit. But pretty much it seems like these two guys, they, uh, they're like bounty hunters almost for the IRS. Yes. And they they gathered all this information from all these sources about a bunch of fuckery going on in the Clinton Foundation. How basically it's like a it, yeah, and uh, yeah they they because of tax evasion right, and they get ten yeah. percent if it's found out to be true. Yeah, exactly. But they they didn't mention any amounts or anything deep in that hearing because I, for, I forgot what I heard now. Something to do with the fact that the the the, the Congress people knew they were bounty hunters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they knew they couldn't give up too much information until right. it went further. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so who knows? Maybe there'll be some advances, advances but, there, yeah. but there you know, everywhere else they're probably just reporting on, you know, the Cohen thing and how Trump's going to go to jail and how all the blocks are falling. And no, you know. let's contrast the whole Clinton foundation thing, which is proven fraud, right? In mm-hmm. a lot of, in a lot of ways they've committed fraud according to a bunch of people. Um, at whatever, but the government's still going after the Trump Foundation, and mm-hmm. all the the whole Trump family is being sued individually by I forget the woman's name. It's a New York, I think, prosecutor who's really? going after them for illegal charity fraud and stuff like that. Wow! This this fund only hold, held, if I remember the number, it was less than ten million dollars ever. Uh. It never really got started. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's not like the nine billion that the Clinton Foundation had. Exactly. They just they just exactly. dipped into whatever they wanted. But See, dude, who knows? Very it's selective. All... Justice is selective. Yeah, it's all it's fuckery all and story. nonsense. I wanted to bring up. Um... Oh wait, speaking of Democrats and fuckery, the whole Mueller thing. Mm-hmm. They uh, Flynn had a sentencing hearing today. Really? Anything come of it? And the judge postponed it for ninety days. 
I wonder yeah, why. He was because he was mouthing off to uh because Mueller <laughs> telling me he's a it's a treason or not treason, but uh just going off at, at him in courtroom. Pretty much. Yeah. He's getting he's he's telling Mueller that look, you entrapped him and if he can prove it, you're fucked. Oh That's wow. Kind of what, what went on, yeah. Not he, he didn't say it that way. Mm-hmm. You know, but he kept asking him, you know, are you sure you don't want to change your plea? Mr. Yeah. Flynn, General Flynn, you know, like, why would he? That's crazy. Well, he, Entrapment. he wasn't, you know what? He wasn't even national security director when he allegedly quote unquote lied to the FBI. Right. He was, he hadn't been sworn in or anything. He was just a, a civilian or whatever army dude. <laughs> But he's still connected to the Trump administration, you know. But he's got other issues. He's he's not perfect. Dude, nobody's perfect. That's the thing. Right. It's like if they expect some sort of white shining freaking knight to step in and be president or something, they're crazy. Like they we're all human. If someone does, he's probably the worst one of all. Yeah, that's that's exactly. It's just pure insanity. Jeff, just, just gonna cheer. Charity. Uh, what John, John, John McAfee 2020. <laughs> That's who I'm voting for. <laughs> oh, speaking of McAfee and crazy fucking billionaires, um, did you see the Virgin Galactic sent up a, a, a test flight? On yeah, the yeah, I heard something about that. Yeah. They they went to like near Earth orbit. Whoop, Jeez. Big whoop. Yeah. Right. You can get your balloon out of your backyard up that high. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what do you got, Felix? Of speaking of charity, <laughs> I wanted to bring this up and throw it out to you guys. Wait, see what you thought. This is like a thought experiment about char- uh, charity and, and sacrifice. I listened to like a little ph- philosophical podcast recently about it, and you know, Christmas time is time to be charitable and give. So the thought experiment goes like this: You got a real nice imagine. So put your put your thought experiment caps on. Okay. James? <laughs> yes. Jerry? Got your thought experiment cap on? Yeah, yeah, dude, go. <laughs> so it has to do with kind of like um, the for the greater good or for the kind of in the moment good. But the, the thought experiment goes, you got a really nice uh, Rolex watch on and it's very intricate and it's almost kind of tough to take off super expensive and you're walking down the street and then all of a sudden you see a little kid drowning and you say to yourself, Oh man, I got to jump in there and save this kid and I'm going to destroy my watch. I can't even take it off. But a thought goes to your head. You go, Hey, here's what I'll do. I'll, I'll just sell this watch in a couple days and I will donate it to a charity. That's going to help more than one kid, maybe four or five kids or more. So you decide to just go do that instead of jumping in the water and saving the one kid. Hmm. Hmm. Now, I mean, if I was walking by, I saw a kid fell in the water. I'd just jump in and save the kid. Yeah. That's all I, would I, th- do. I think I would probably <laughs> save the kid too, instead of, uh, yeah. donating to a charity, which it may or may not help. I thought about kid. that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. That was- no, I'd, I'd help the uh, I'd help the kid in immediate immediate uh, danger. And the um, the big ethical or moral thing that they kind of talked about after mentioning this was that a lot of the charities that you send money to, and if it's like out of your country, the money has to go through you know top down through government. Oh yeah, yeah. You don't even know what happens to any of that money. Don't need to the Clinton Foundation. Oh wait. Or the- or it's like the governments of like countries that are, you know, terrible things are happening to their people and, and the money, they, they take a cut and pretend Dude, like they get the money. You can to probably yeah. track bullshit with the Red Cross. Oh, <laughs> like, I'm sure. I mean, all that stuff. Yeah. It's like, I'm sure it's all fucking. I'm like, I even thinking of like local hospitals here. I'm like, you like, same thing that like you said. It's all going through this hand me down step. And by the time they get any of that money, it's probably like pennies on the dollar. Well, the amount of money that seems to get donated to things like yeah. that, you figure like all the crises would be solved. Like, I don't understand. Yeah. It's just, it's crazy. 
Just send your cash. There's just, just so much corruption. Another aspect I didn't ever think of was there. They also mentioned that in, in these places that are needing a lot of help that um, they'll talk about like a brain drain where, you know, you send money to a certain area and people get hired, like professionals get hired to come and help people out, you know, building places and uh, doctors and things like that. And uh, people will come from other areas around there that, they see that there's money coming in and they, they, the brain drain mm-hmm. aspect comes where like they'll, they'll go to where the money is for the charity and then they'll leave their, their place where the place where they came from and the place where they came from needs help too, but they made their way to where the money is. And it's almost like there's no, not, it's not a win-win kind of thing. Like the money's there and the people come to the money to help out there. But then as they're, if they're a professional or an expert in something, they leave their hometown and their hometown now has a, yeah, like a, there's a hole uh, there where there once yeah. was a professional and now there isn't. Yeah. Yeah. So it's pretty crazy. It's like, just, I think it kind of comes down to just like help your community and just help people. Yep. Think you know. local, act local, do things local. So that's the shit that really affects people you. People think I'm controversial, but the <laughs> truth is I'm a nice guy. And I made a lot of money in Atlantic City, and I'm very—I'm really rich. Oh, what's the big uh, the big Trump thing? I didn't look into. Was this isn't like S- isn't he something with SNL? Pissed him off or something? And, oh, he just he went on a little uh, tweet storm or something this morning about uh, fake news media, SNL, and everything is brainwashing people to be like in, like liberals or something. That's totally paraphrasing, but that was pretty much the gist. I of think it. I read something too that he's going to use the courts to hammer down on <laughs> well, that's I, didn't, re- I didn't read into it I, I would not be a fan of that at all that'd be the worst thing ever to suppress any kind of, of yeah dude don't suppress any speech no way that's craziness let people say what they want even it's, though I don't and we're going to have a lot of fun tonight <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. should I get you guys a little song and a little uh, warm things up a little you want to warm things up? How is the situation in Russia? <laughs> Hawaiian Christmas song? Hawaii. Yeah, Hawaiian. A quick one for you. Yeah, let's hear it. Japan, Mexico, China, the You'll United States of America. <laughs> you'll know it when you hear it, and maybe you'll have like a little vision of uh, Clark Gr- uh, Griswold uh, looking oh, out okay. at his imaginary pool. <laughs> Girl on the red uh, 90. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Yeah. Yeah, you ready for this? I was born ready. Oh, you know great. what's so weird is that song was I was at the Home Depot tonight again, and that was playing when I walk right when I walked in that started playing like oh, Bing Crosby man. version. It gave what, me what chills. Are you, what are you crafting on, Jer? Oh, you got the bone. Making. Oh, I can go get it. I go get it. I made some shit. Made some shit like this. Hey, let me like, let me talk about what I'm making. Yeah. What? Oh, yeah. You're you're working on a table too. A bunch of handy guys, handy dudes. Yeah, it's gonna, Dude, it's really, gonna, it's really gonna help my whole um, setup here with the podcast and then also uh, music. So I'm just building a table and just glued glued up some pieces. And I've been getting uh, some uh, tips from T Bone Shuffle in the in the chats about how to really make it last. You're brilliant. You're handsome. You're rich. 
So <laughs> it's just a couple of boards glued together. And then I did a, a little uh, polyurethane and stain thing. And it's like really glassy looking now. And I got some hairpin uh, metal that I got from Etsy that came in. And I'm just going to do a little frame on the bottom and put it all together and have a nice table. Nice. And, and then I'll be able to set my like monitors for my, my music production. Finally set them up nice where I can get like a true sound. And the truest just, of sounds. Yeah, just mix sounds a little bit better. Because right now mm-hmm. I, just, I had to kind of like crouch to get my ears where my speakers are in the right spot for my ears to hear them. Yeah. So I got to get that figured out. I'm sure it'll sound great. Yeah. Can't wait. So I was going to make like candle holders. I wanted to make something for, for my family, right? But I've had a lot of trouble with handling material. Like I couldn't get wood that I couldn't, I had to get wood that I couldn't cut. Uh, or I didn't need to cut rather, you know, because I didn't have a saw, but then I got a saw. So it's been crazy. <laughs> anyway, I've been making tool handles. Ooh, nice. How's that? That looks good. So I made three of these. I think I should. Ooh. Yeah, those look good. It almost like looks like you got pepper in that one. You can like <laughs> yeah, grinder. pepper grinder. Yeah. So then I'm I um I bought this eight foot piece of post for like eight bucks. Ooh. Of uh, Douglas fir, and I'm making a giant. I got tr- to drill fist. this. No, I got to drill this out. I've got over there. They're like uh, flickering LEDs. Okay. Candles. Yeah. And then you're going to put them on there for the candle hold? Oh, that's going to be nice. Inside, yeah. So yeah. this is what I'm going to give to my parents for Christmas. But then I'm like, it. that's ugly. <laughs> so I made another one. Ooh. You like reverse? It looks like you did a little bit of reverse action there. I did a bunch of shit on that. That's nice. Looks smooth. It is. It's it's sanded up to like 800. Did you polish that knob? I polish it up, but then when I drilled it out, it was too not wide enough. And I tried to drill it last night. And I totally fucked it up. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like you're making a giant chess set. And those are like rooks or pawns. Well, that was another thing I could do too. I have enough. I, the place I bought this, they have, um, I think 10 more of those eight foot posts. So I could make a shitload of chess pieces, <laughs> giant ones. This is what, you know, seven inches. Is the lathe hooked up to like a 220 volt? No. Thing no 120. 120, 121. Whatever it takes. That's a Mr. Yeah. Mom joke. A lot of dust? Yeah, I've been sweeping though a lot. A lot. You wear a face mask? Yeah. I got uh, one of those RZ masks. Ooh. Have you seen those? No. It's like the one that Scorpion and Sub Zero use in Mortal Kombat. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> like the one that those uh, the news reporters guys did on uh, during uh, the the uh, shock, uh, what is it? Shock and awe. This is the one I actually have. This orange one, which I can't make a copy of. Um, where are you guys? It was on Thanks. sale for like thirteen bucks or something. <laughs> It looks like it's for hunting. It's yeah, that thing is nice. It sort of yeah. is a. Uh, it sort of looks like the mask that uh, Sub Zero and Scorpion use. <laughs> well, here I could do this. Cyrex. Looks like the lower part of Optimus Prime's. This is oh. what it looks like, but it's orange. Man, you do like that's like Antifa to the next level. <laughs> In my garage with a knife. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Filter. Hmm? Did it come with two filters? Came with two or three, yeah. Like I said, it was on clearance. I got it for fourteen bucks, and they're usually like, I forget how much they were. But how do you know when to change the filters? When it's dirty. Yeah. Can you just clean them? I don't think so. Oh, they have a video of it. Look at this. Watch this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, I forgot we're on the radio. Yeah, that's fine. See. Oh man, 
That's a nice yeah. mask. So anyway. You could wear that while you wear your Oculus Rift and your whole face will be covered. I, could, I wish only the, the mask would emit, you know, pulsed wave radiation into my yeah. mouth. It or it could get hacked like in the Incredibles 2 where uh Sorry, you know, pulse they, microwave radiation. Where, where, they, where they hacked the videos and uh, the screener or whatever his name was and all that flash came through and all those people got epilepsy in the movie theater. <laughs> now combine that with the last action hero. We could, we could push all the epileptics into the movie world and take all the cool people out. Oh, man. I always forget about last action hero. That was, I used to watch that a lot when I was younger. Schwarzenegger in that? Yeah, it's a really good concept. I have been binge watching The Flash because I never saw that before. Have you I've, I've that always show? heard that that was really good, but I never watched it. It it, it is, but it's the third season now, and it's like, oh, this kid's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Barry Allen. Like everything that they've gone through is because he's a dumbass. Man. Yeah. Keeps screwing up the timeline. There's some bad guy. They finally kick him out of the universe, but he's still out there. I got to kill him, you know? So they open a rip in the universe. Oh, well, <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? I don't know. Man. Today's the, uh, kisses his ass t- on top of it. today's the 21st anniversary of, uh, Chris Farley's death. Died at age really? 33. Wow. Oh. Of course he did. Yeah, of course he did. 33. Shows up what, everywhere. How old was Belushi when he died? I don't know. It's a good question. Was he 29, 27? He might have been in the 27 club. Uh, he was he was oh, 33. Wait, he, oh, he says I should wear that no, mask. He, Belushi was 33 also. Was he? Yeah, I thought so. That's there crazy. was some tie between them. Like he yeah. wanted to die at the same time that Belushi did. Yeah. I think Pen- didn't did Penny Marshall just die? Yeah, she was. She died today. She was eighty something. Yeah. Eighty. Her brother was eighty when he died. That's what I'm thinking of. Gary Marshall. Yeah, Penny Marshall. Gary, Gary. I sound like a cult man. Gary. <laughs> Jerry. <laughs> Where's he been? Well, uh, on Twitter. He was just around a lot for a bit there. Now he's not. He's got his own uh, podcast started up, Six of Swords. Oh, good. So he's doing his own thing now. Sweet. I called a tarot card on Trish's show yesterday. Oh, yeah? While I was driving. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) We got anything else, guys? Uh... I, I mean, I just these these crazy Santa Claus stories on Reddit are kind of trippy. But basically, all in all, it's like the one cool aspect of it is um, someone brought up that they're just like tulpas, basically. Like these, the, what I was looking for was um, you'll find like a shit ton of like, have you seen Santa Claus? Like seriously, you know, and you'll get tons of people saying like, you know, obviously who knows what they're thinking or what they saw, but, uh, oh, man. yeah, I mean, and, but that's then a, that's a good question. Why aren't <laughs> there more Santa Claus tulpas around? Well, that's, that was kind of what the one guy was explaining, you know, the, the whole tulpa aspect of it and, uh, or Easter bunnies or tooth fairies or any of that. Shit. Right. Yeah. Uh, why aren't, why don't people more people, enough people believe in them? If this, if that thing is actually true, right. You know, it's like the, thought form entity conjured or manifested by, you know, mm-hmm. uh, by an individual or a group uh, yeah, or a group, uh, the entity, uh, which can be created by the collective conscious based on their creator's perception. Santa Claus is apparently one of these folklore heroes that waver between reality and fiction, depending on who you talk to it's possible that the temporary manifestation could occur as a result of someone's beliefs in that entity. Uh, so even though that, that doesn't, you know, entirely believe in the fabricating in a Tulpa are, you know, subs, subs, 
sub 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 I don't know that word. Suspectable. Suspect. Supposedly. Supposedly. Susceptible. Susceptible. There you go. You got there. You don't know that. You don't know that word. Not that I've read recently. Susceptible to dude. Reading's overrated. Well, it's weird because apparently it's right on top of it. So the P's and the the B, everything's like morphing together. I'm like trying to read it far away. Uh, to interaction and witness one's emotions. Uh, traditionally, doctrines like the Samaphala Sutra elaborate on the. There's no words here. What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> Samanafala Sota. Elaborate on the <laughs> purpose of tulpas and describe them as mind made bodies. It must be yeah, it's some some type of Tibetan shit. Uh that the clout Well tulpas tulpa. are from Eastern traditions, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So that makes sense. Tulpas created as a stream. Mediation and others believe that they can be created by accident merely by willing their into existence. It's definitely an interesting phenomena. And that was the most concise <laughs> explanation of what a tulpa is that anybody will ever hear. Santa Claus, bro. Well, uh, dude, it, I mean, it is nuts. If if you believe in something hard enough. Maybe it could become real. Coca-Cola yeah. branded it. You know, the, the modern day Santa Claus is it's 100% just a Coke ad. And we just ran with it. So who knows? <laughs> who really knows? Back in Final. the middle 80s, I was five years old. My sister said, if I clean my room, Santa's elves would witness it and report back to Santa. If they saw me clean it well, I would get more toys. After I finished cleaning my room, I looked out the window to the neighbor's garage with the floodlight, and I swear I saw a stereotypical elf on the shelf looking creature jump up and click its heels in glee. I assumed, I assumed he was happy. I had cleaned my room and was going to pass that on to Santa. I went out to, I went out and told my sister and her friend, and they were like, yeah, sure. Never saw anything like it again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Elf on the shelf. Click its heels with glee. I dig that. We have an elf on the shelf. You guys got an elf? I read a Wall Street Journal article about how parents are getting super stressed out about the elf on the shelf uh, <laughs> ritual. The kid was bitching this morning that it was in the same place as it was before. <laughs> Uh, so, so, yeah, parents will like argue about it. Like the husband or wife will say something like, uh, "Like oh, you, you can find it in the time. trash can soon. That's where you're gonna find it." <laughs> but these parents were just talking about how they get so stressed out about how you create. You got to be, and then you forget about it. Like, and you wake up in the middle of the night and you're scrambling to make. Uh, it happened to me last night. Make <laughs> it's stuck in the same damn spot. <laughs> There's only so many places in my freaking house I can put this stupid thing. You just gotta get props, baby. You gotta get some like zip line props. I shoved it in a little, mason jar a couple of days ago. Little marshmallows and have them like roasting <laughs> them on a candle. When are you gonna? St- have you started doing Elf do on the Shelf, Felix? Yeah. I'm not gonna do it because of the, just the whole like. Yeah, it's just something. It's too hipster. Doing. No, it's thrown into your life, and it's like, hey, I didn't come up with this. Exactly. Hey, That's I'm what every tradition is, though. It's just thrown in. I didn't come up with Buy the this. newest fad. Now they sell an Elf on the Shelf pet. This is the one where I just don't <laughs> want to be doing it every single night till the 25th, like every night doing it. It's ridiculous. Sit there, and you're just like, what, what has come of my it's life? Just an, it's just another mind control technique to add more stress to an already stressful time of year that yeah. people just put on themselves. It's ridiculous. It, uh, it was funny in the article. Our someone, else name is Gerald. <laughs> someone, someone mentioned the article how they were to- totally trying to avoid the whole ritual, and then one that's day, my name. One day, their son came home and and said, uh, "Hey, mom, hey, dad, did you guys know that there's going to be an elf that's going to visit our house?" Uh, and they had, they had been trying to avoid it, and then the and then they ended up saying that the that uh, the elf is allergic to cats. Boom! There you go. There's always a scapegoat. 
Well, then the whole thing, isn't it just that the, the elf is just watching the behaviors of your children and yeah. reports back? Well, that's what OAD just said in the chat. It's normalizing the surveillance state. <laughs> yeah, that's another aspect of it. And it's just like, just tell your kid, hey, you're a good kid. I don't need to freaking have a little stupid weird. Yeah, like, I, 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 I don't watch you. I don't really. I don't really. Uh, I just. It's just in my house. I, I don't say <laughs> it. it's reporting back. House. Yeah, it's so ridiculous. It's got, a, it's got an Amazon Echo in it, listening Burn. to everything. Dude, yeah, yeah it's got it. an Amazon Echo in it. <laughs> Burn it in effigy. Burn yeah. it. Elf on the candle. Burn it in effigy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's Elf. A little pun. A little pun for you. That's gonna a good find, yeah, like I said, gonna find it in my trash can or out in the front yard. That's it. <laughs> All right, from the thousand. Find it on the windshield as they're driving, getting dropped off at school. <laughs> <laughs> thousand recordings to hear before you die. Oh, what do you got, dude? I got a Christmassy one. Love that book. Never heard it before, but it sounds like kind of like a jazzy uh, rendition about oh Jesus, baby Jesus. I forgot one more thing. So it's entitled "Looking at Jesus from All Sides." Vinked regards Sir Leonfant Jesus. Uh, the, I think the Oliver Messian might be the artist. Well, I'll get into it here. Pierre, there's all these names here. So I got to figure out who, who is who. Uh, an evening uh, long series of vignettes for solo piano. Vinked regards is Olivier Messian's meditation on the infant Jesus and by extension spirituality itself. Written in Paris in 1944. Shortly after the trailblazing composer was released from prison camp where he'd composed quartet for the end of time. See previous page. It begins with deliberate chords played in unwavering rhythm, the solemn march of the pious. From there, Messian explores different perspectives on the miracle birth, sorting through the symbology that's accumulated over centuries. There are episodes uh, imagining the thoughts of God, the father and the reactions of the prophets and the angels. Messian, 1908 to 1992, was a devout Catholic. His pieces mix ritual aspects of the Mass with hints of mysticism and outbursts that equate religious devotion with sensual bliss. Is that a little bit of it? Mm hmm. How'd you find that? Um, I'm a wizard. Wow, it's, it's two hours long. He's grim on the shelf. Just a little uh, grim on the shelf here. Uh, the titles and brief descriptions messy. They're, they're just little vignettes about Jesus, baby Jesus. The titles and brief descriptions Messian wrote to explain the sections draw on biblical image, images. The preface to the third section reads, Depend- or Descending in a spray, rising in a spiral, the terrible trade between humans and God. God made man to make us gods. <laughs> but, words, but words are limiting. This music ventures far from any fixed programmatic narrative. Each section finds its own source of light, its own tonal signature. In the Noel, for example, the Christmas bells carry menacing dissonant overtones. The otherworldly mists of the 19th, 19th section, J'adore mes mon sieur veille, I don't know if I pronounced that right, suggest Eric Satier puzzling over the jet age while the big bruising chords that begin the final section could be messian messian simulation of the inferno down below the vast temperamental range of the piece has been known to vex those who attempt to perform it so i think it's a, a oh yeah listen range. to this Banging on keys. A uh, French French pianist Pierre Laurent Aymar studied with Messian, and his interpretation is notable for its clarity. Also, I guess Messian's the guy who composed it, and then Pierre Le- Laurent um, Aymar is the guy who kind of plays it, actually performs it. Mm-hmm. Uh, studied with Messian, and his t- interpretation is notable for its clarity, as well as its obvious affection for the the composer's quirks. Without sensationalizing, Amard points out the piece's more outlandish effects. He brings a fanciful touch to the surreal bird songs, then it executes the super fast ascending and descending lines with precision. 
allowing them to unfold like metaphysical chase scenes, never demanding tidy resolution. As he seizes on Messian's fina- uh, fantastical details, Amard approaches the work less as a literal uh, representation of one storied miracle birth and more like a celebration of miracles, celestial and otherwise. Man. Classical piano. Classical piano. Classical yeah, I link the uh, I link the YouTube video for that in uh, the chats. That's yeah, kind of cool little little vignettes on the on some religious things. Mm. Baby Jesus. Baby Jesus. Uh, uh, I got one last thing. Wrap I gotta it up, go with James. Uh, yeah, cr- uh, best Christmas movies of all time list. There we go. <laughs> good, good old listicle. Uh, here we'll go. Yeah. We'll we'll start at I don't know. I'll just we'll start at 13 just because it's fun. Um White Christmas, 1954, American musical romantic comedy. Never seen it. Bing Bing Crosby. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that either. Uh I mean I know of it. I've just I always I always love this one that how they how they mix it in with Christmas movies, but die hard, dude. Die, oh, Hard's yeah, Die Hard's totally cool. a Christmas movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The quarterback is toast. Yeah, I love that. That movie's great. <laughs> uh, Scrooged, number okay. 11. Bill Murray, yeah. Yeah, Bill Murray. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, I went through a few five, six years where I watched that a lot. It was pretty good. Hmm. Um. Midlife Miracle Christmas. on 34th Street. That's number 10. That's 1940. Well, number one is like a Christmas story, I bet. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the Santa Claus with Tim Allen. Okay. We uh, and yeah. That's that's ninth. Uh, yeah. 1994. What is that like? 34 years ago? Uh, 24 oh. years ago. <laughs> I, was a, I was a freshman in high school then. Uh, in what? 1994? I was a freshman in high school, yeah. I think I was in like third or fourth grade, something like that. <laughs> I think I was like in fourth grade. I was at the yeah. options exchange. I was writing software, you bitches. <laughs> right. <yeah. laughs> that was right when I was like, computers are pretty cool. I might want to do something in, with computers. And I and eventually did, yeah. I was playing Oregon Trail, probably. Oh, yeah. Right. Me too. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> on, I remember on, an Apple IIe, on an Apple IIe in the computer lab. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, the classic uh, Rudolph's Red Nosed Reindeer. Okay. Uh, number the Resnos. Res- the Hermes, Res-nos. the yeah. Elf. Rudolph, the and Resin Filled Reindeer. Rain- yeah. Yukon Jack. <laughs> reindeer? The Resnone. Resnos- the Resin Filled Reindeer. Yeah, I heard somebody just <laughs> as a quick aside. Somebody was talking about Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer being a racist thing. Oh <laughs> God! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, really. <sighs> uh, he used to laugh at it and call him names, that kind of thing. Yeah, <laughs> it's bullying. Rudolph needs a safe space. <laughs> yeah, Rudolph a needs safe a safe space. space. Oh, Send him to that island oh. of misfit toys. Come on. <laughs> Then you got uh, Boris, Boris Kar- uh, Karloff's uh, Doctor Seuss, uh, the you know the Grinch stole how the Grinch stole Christmas. The, 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 the yes, the original only one. yes, nineteen sixty six version. Jim I swear, Carrey, the, right? the, Jim Carrey's was pretty good. I saw the new Grinch. The oh, the Boris Karloff, uh, the cartoon one. Yeah, the yes, cartoon original. one, the the good one. Uh, no, this yeah, the Jim Carrey one is not. Uh, Elf, which is. Probably elf. one of my favorite ones. It's a good too. one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're Wolf an girl. angry elf. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a great one. Man. <clears throat> Will Ferrell. Call me uh, elf one more time. Call me <laughs> elf. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> Charlie Brown Christmas. Yeah. Uh, that's that's... number five. Uh, oh, yeah. Home Alone, which is a classic. That's oh, yeah. Great. Home Alone's great. Yeah. Was that Home Alone uh, 4? That, no, uh, it is number four, though. No, Home um, Alone number four, the fourth installment. No. no. Was there even a Home Alone 4? That's terrible. Because I remember okay, three. There was one, one where uh, 
the kid is like alone in the suburbs and he, the big the big thing to it is there's these like french people who want to yeah that like that, a, that was home alone three wasn't it? it was terrible without macaulay oh, culkin there's like a there's like a mic they, they put a like a microchip in a, yeah. in a remote control car that has like all kinds of crazy data on it <laughs> somehow the kid gets it and they have to get it back <laughs> terrible and this this site i'm going on it it's called uh it's called ranker so it's like vote on everything you know um and, and it's basically an upvote or a downvote it's not like some rotten tomato type deal right. but uh uh, this so it's a wonderful life, James Stewart. Donna that's Reed. number three, yeah. That's number three. Um, Nat, uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation is number two, nice. Yep. And uh, number one is a Christmas story I shot and filmed in Cleveland, where I live. Really, yeah. yes, yeah. it took place. It took you place like, like, uh, right, right around Downton where I live, Lake. up in uh, Hammond. Took place yeah. in there, and that's crazy. Mm-hmm. Well, shit, guys. They have the Christmas Story house. In, um, the with the leg, are, yeah. yeah, with the leg lamp and all that shit. Yeah, nice. they have the house here. You can. It's like a big thing. Everyone go, goes drives by it. You can. I think for like a donation, you can go in and everything. Cool. Uh, well, tomorrow night. Cool though, uh, man. So to the Clinton Foundation. Yeah, I'll go to the Clinton Foundation. Uh, tomorrow That's, night we're gonna yeah. be doing uh uh, the Grimerica Grilling Report Christmas Steak Fandango Holiday Fandango Spectacular tomorrow night. Oh, it's all happening so that'll tomorrow. Be, uh, yeah. That'll probably be on Grimerica's YouTube. It'll be on the live stream here. So yeah. Tune into that. We'll be we, we have an early show, so I'll be able to check it yes, out. Awesome. Yes, Jerry's, oh, got, cool. Jerry's got early show tomorrow with MJ Dixon, Don't friend of the show. Call me with trivia questions. Oh, no, <laughs> yeah. well, dude, that was great. The uh, we, Felix uh, here did a... Uh, we, he came up with a great show, Leopardy. <laughs> we did that, yeah. yeah. It's on the Grimerica you, Black Budget stream. Yeah. Yes, I was just going to say, if you subscribe oh, to the Black Budget stream, you'll hear us go toe-to-toe with Grimerica. Mm-hmm. We need a rematch for for the third installment. Yeah. But tie. For other, the tiebreaker. Tie, yeah. Other than that, you know, you can find uh, Jerry at noxmente.com. Check that all out. That's right. That's right. Felix at sirfelix.bandcamp.com. Go there, buy some tunes and jams. And then, uh, yeah, you cruising with steak.com is us. And yep. thanks thanks for listening, guys. This is a great night. Fuck yeah. Good thanks for chatting night. in the cruising with steak Discord chat. Catch you on the flip uh, side. We love yep. you all. Love you all. Long time. Long Peace. time. Sucky, sucky. I right, know. Shows, shows over. <laughs> <laughs> There's no heartbreak to speak of in my proximity. But when I factor in the wider world, my outlook is painted in misery. Can you commiserate with me? Can you commiserate with me? Let me share with you my dream where we all live simply so that others may simply live and we wake the world from this nightmare come on all you millennials and give it all you got to give. Can we 
all live simply So that others may simply live Let's wake the world from this nightmare Come on all you millennials And give it all you've got to give Give it all you've got to give.